Hey guys, this is Dan Strong with Excel VBA is fun. Thanks for tuning back in. Today we had a quick question about using the VLOOKUP function using VBA instead of VLOOKUP in a rather regular Excel worksheet. So let's go ahead and work through some of the typical errors that can occur and how we can use error handling in order to supersede them and not worry about it so much if something is not found. So let's go ahead and start. Um, I'm going to change the word meatball because that's our search term that we're going to do in our little example. I'm going to change it to some jargon here. Let's hit Alt F11. I've already got a simple macro here that has a variable that's going to receive the VLOOKUP. So using application.worksheetfunction.vlookup. And so the first, the term that we're actually doing is a hard coded term of the word meatball. And we're searching in uh, sheet 2, so this workbook dot sheets, sheet 2 dot range, and the range is called my named range. Let me show you what I did. I went ahead and selected a few cells. Let's see what I did. My named range is actually A1 through uh, B8. I highlighted that. I typed this my named range up here in the name box and I hit enter. Now you can do a dynamic range. I have some videos on that. But essentially, this is my lookup range right here, and that's good enough for a VLOOKUP. So Alt F11. So we're using Sheet 2, and specifically the range called My Named Range. You can also put uh, A1 through B8, and you could put that in quotes, and that would work as well. So comma. So the third thing in a VLOOKUP, as you know, is which column do we want to return the value from? So we have, let's say, column A, or the very first column in your group of columns is what we're looking at, and we're returning column two, the number, the amount, in this case. And zero is the same as false. It means an exact lookup. Anyway, let's go ahead and run this. So if I run it right now, F8, F8, let's just step through. Uh, we're looking up the word meatball in column, the first column, so if I hit Oh, see there? This is what we're talking about. There's an error. There's a runtime error 1004 for the VLOOKUP property. It basically means, hey, that is not found. Now let me show you three things that it could be if you're troubleshooting a VLOOKUP. First of all, uh, the first thing to look at is, is the word meatball or whatever you're searching actually in your list? So if we're going to go over that. I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, the other two things you need to look for is do you actually have the right sheet name here? What if I didn't have a sheet named Sheet 2? What if I had uh, I had a misspelling here? Double check that. And wherever the range is, you need to use that sheet. And then um, do you have the named range or the actual uh, the actual name of the cell location if you're not using a named range? Do you have that spelled right? Is everything look good there? Also, is there a column? Uh, two or whatever number you have. Let's say you're doing column 14 and you only have 13 columns in your range. That could cause an error as well. All right, but in this case, um, I've double checked everything. There is a sheet two. There is something called my named range, and it does have at least two columns. So the problem is meatball is missing. So let's do a little bit of um, troubleshooting uh, whenever an error occurs like that. So what we want to do is preemptively put an on error resume next and what that does is it tells it to basically skip over uh, VLOOKUPs that aren't found. So on error resume next is going to allow this line to occur without bringing any error codes up it'll just let it keep on going but this variable will contain an empty variable instead of the actual value of 300 that we were looking for. So then when you get past that point uh, we want to do a little bit more error catching. So in order to catch a, let's see, we'll say in order to catch a situation when VLOOKUP is not found, we want to do this. If ERR.number tab, if error number is not equal to zero, because when an error um, when the ERR.number is zero, that means no errors have occurred at all, and everything is honky-dory. This is pretty typical unless an error has popped up. When an error has popped up, the error number might be 1004 or whatever error code, but it will not be zero. So whenever it's not equal to zero, then 
we know there's an error. So we'll say VLOOKUP not found. And so we might want to do stuff here. And I don't know what you might want to do. You might want to put a message. You might want to have it you know, just go ahead and skip over, in which case you wouldn't even need this statement here. Um, but you might want to go a separate path if something's not found. Maybe add a new item into your customer list or bring up a dialog box or a user form that asks it to add something new or fix something. And then uh, in a moment, we basically need to clear the error code uh, now that you did stuff. So here's how you clear the error. It's simple, err dot clear. So I type CL tab. And then of course you need an end if to match your if statement. You need an end if. And so basically, um, let's go ahead and backtrack to the on error resume next. Let's hit F8. So now that on error resume next is in place, if there's no VLOOKUP found, then at least it will not bring up an, a, an error code and it will go ahead and tell me. So if error number is not equal to zero, then, okay, we might want to do stuff here. Uh, and then at the end of doing stuff, we want to clear the error. So the next time, if there's a loop or something, that there won't be an outstanding error code sitting there. So err.clear, F8, F8, F8. So that's how you avoid those uh, error messages and maybe redirect the code to do something different in case you need it to. Now let's go ahead and fix our error. Let's type in, let's see, meet ball. Was it plural? Let's see. Just a singular meatball. So let's run it this way, F8 on error resume next. So if I hit this, you see the an my answer equals 300. So that's actually captured the value that we wanted. And so if error number is not equal to zero, well, I think error number is equal to zero. So it should skip over this. And yes, it did. So what we might want to do, just for a simple demonstration, we'll put an else statement, meaning uh, if there is no error, then we might want to put a message box that says um, the answer is ampersand to join that sentence with the variable uh, my answer. So what this would do is answer is space 300. So let's do that whenever there's not an error. Answer is 300. So that's the VLOOKUP value. So it would either do nothing but not show an error or it would bring a message box up if the answer is what we want. So let's take it one step further just for fun. Let's put uh, what we want to look up in cell D1. So if we do meatball in cell D1, let's point our variable to D1. So we're going to say my lookup equals, and I'm going to say this workbook dot sheets, sheet two dot range D1. And the range D1 is what we want to look up. And my lookup is the variable that's going to take that on. So instead of my, uh, let's see, instead of the word meatball hard coded, let's just use a variable without quotes, such as my lookup, so that anything that's in D1 will be uh, looked up and we'll apply this too. So let's hit F8 and see what happens. So my lookup equals range D1, that is meatball. So now we're going to look up the word meatball right there. We already did that. Let's hit F5 or click the continue button. Answer is 300. Now, if I put some nonsense in here, hello, and now I run my code, Alt F11. Let's go ahead and hit F5 and see what happens. Oh, nothing's happening. But if I put test, which is the first entry, Alt F11, if I hit F5 now or click this green play button, now it'll do a lookup and give me an answer. So there's no error. We're error free, and we can now manipulate it as we see fit. And that's how to do some error handling in VLOOKUP using v Visual Basic. And we'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching. God bless.